I left my PhD program one year ago. Here's a very honest update on how life has been going. So this video is designed for people in a PhD program who are considering leaving, but they want to have a better sense of what happens afterwards. Anyone curious about the general pros and cons of a PhD program, as well as how I turned my degrees and my education into an entrepreneurial life where I'm now a full-time content creator, keynote speaker, and work for myself. There are timestamps in this video, so feel free to jump around to whatever you need, and let's jump right in. So for a little bit of context, I went to Cornell University for undergrad. I double majored and double minored. My majors were feminist gender and sexuality studies and Asian studies with a concentration in China. My minors were inequality studies and Africana studies. I graduated from undergrad in 2020 and went straight into an MA PhD program at Northwestern University in African American studies. As I was getting close to finishing my master's degree, I decided to master out of the program, which essentially means that I left and finished my master's degree, but decided not to continue with the PhD portion of the program. Program. Let's talk about what I've been up to since. When I left my program, it was definitely a leap of faith. I finished my master's and immediately went into working for myself full time, which is something that I had never done before. When I was getting close to finishing my master's degree, I had about 70K followers on Instagram and a somewhat similar amount over on TikTok, maybe closer to like 90K around that time. I don't fully remember. And now I have over 100K on both Instagram and TikTok and over 10K here on YouTube, which is really wild. So we've definitely grown our little community quite a bit over this last year. I now work for myself full time as a content creator and educational keynote speaker, and I've had so many incredible opportunities to deliver educational keynotes, to speak on panels. I've been in DC quite a bit over the last year. I went to the White House in 2023. I also was in DC back in January for the State of the Union. There's this thing called Media Row, where basically members of Congress do a bunch of interviews leading up to the State of the Union in the evening. And I was one of a very small handful of creators who were invited to come and interview members of Congress. I have a whole vlog about that if you wanna see what the experience was like. And of course, I've been making lots of educational content to empower people with the knowledge and the frameworks that they need to live more loving, intentional, and capacious lives. It has been incredibly gratifying to fully step into the reason that I started doing this work in the first place, which is to connect the jargony, inaccessible world of academia to the average person in a way that's resonant and helpful and is rooted in service. So thanks to every single one of you for making that possible. This is what y'all came for. Let's get into the nitty gritty. What is the etymology of nitty gritty? <laughs> Who came up with that? <laughs> So let's start with the positive. Here are the pros of leaving my program that I have felt most viscerally over the past year. First pro is that I'm making a lot more money now than I was when I was in the program. When I was at Northwestern, I was making 35K as a grad student. Now I will say, and I mentioned this in my last video, that a lot of grad students were starting to unionize at the time. And uh, Northwestern was also a part of that. A lot of grad students, a lot of my friends unionized. I also voted to create the union because that vote took place when I was still affiliated with the university. And they were able to have some significant wins. So I know that the amount that students are being paid at Northwestern now is now over 40K. Um, I don't wanna misspeak, so I won't say an exact number, but I think it's in the 40K to 45K range, which is certainly an improvement. So things are on the up and up. Uh, I think applying for grad school in this current landscape is a little bit different financially than applying for it uh, at the time that I did. Like even when I entered my program, I was making what, like 31, 32K, right? And then it goes up a little bit every year for inflation, at least at Northwestern. To me, that sounded like so much money coming out of college as like a broke college student who was thrilled to make 5K during the summer doing an, an internship. Like that was ridiculous money to me at the time. So the idea of making 35K in a year was gravy. Oh my gosh, I'll be totally cool. But then you hit the real world and you realize that Inflation is so high and everything's expensive and it sounds like a lot more than it is. Yeah, I, uh, I'm doing better for myself and how that I'm out of the academic landscape and able to access other streams of revenue. Another pro is that I've been able to build something completely on my own terms. I'm an entrepreneur, I work for myself, I wake up every day, I decide what I wanna do, what I wanna make, where I wanna dedicate my time and energy. And I think that really terrified me when I first left my program because I was so used to the rhythm of academia, which is, you know, deadlines, being told what to do, which is not to say you don't have autonomy, right? Even in an assignment, maybe it's, you get to decide what you write the essay on, even though it's within certain parameters or something to that effect. So I definitely don't wanna depict academia as totalitarian at all because I, that was not my experience. And there is a kind of built-in structure that I don't have anymore as an entrepreneur. It's really, 
forced me to be disciplined in a totally different way. And there are still deadlines after school. That part doesn't go away. Whether you're doing a nine to five and you had deadlines for your boss of certain assignments you need to get done, or you're living an entrepreneurial life like me and I'm working with clients and I have deliverables that I have certain deadlines for and timelines for, the deadlines don't go away, but I think the autonomy to decide what projects I wanna say yes to or no to, how I wanna divvy up my time and my typical day to day is really open-ended. It's also really nice to be free from the volatility of the academic job market in particular. So this is more of a, a personal reason, I guess, but you know, coming out of the summer of 2020 and in the fall entering a black studies program with everything that happened that summer regarding the movement for black lives, it was just like a really intense time to enter a black studies program. Um, but I think also because of what was happening politically, there were so many opportunities um, and job positions and postings within academia for black studies jobs. But I don't think we realize that when there are major societal shifts like this, it also impacts the academic job market. So whatever feels like very topical or pressing, or there's a strong need for students to wanna to talk and think and read and process through, that tends to also generate more job opportunities. So whereas during 2020 and 2021, there were so many job opportunities in black studies, Fast forward to now and it's not necessarily as robust, at least to my understanding. Um, so I feel very grateful to be free from the confines of the academic job market, anxiety about when I graduate, am I gonna be able to get a job because I'm competing against so many other PhD students for this many jobs. Um, also the uncertainty of whether things like tenure are going to continue to exist or whether they even should exist in the future, given that that kind of solidifies certain people's places in the academy, some of which are really amazing and some of which aren't, and there are pros and cons to that as well. I think volatility exists everywhere and the idea that there is for sure stability in any path that you choose is kind of a fallacy, right? I mean, I think even in my own head, because I haven't had a full-time nine to five job before in my life, sometimes I think about a nine to five and I romanticize it like, oh, you, you know, you're working this job and you know exactly how much your check is gonna be every month and exactly what your responsibilities are and it's so knowable and it's so safe. But then I'm talking to friends who, whose companies are having like huge layoffs, right? And they're like, oh, I feel so lucky I didn't get laid off. Or I have friends that have gotten laid off unexpectedly from these supposedly safe nine to five positions. Of course, the entrepreneurial path also has these kind of landmines and unpredictable elements. I work for myself full time as a contractor. So if I'm getting a lot of work, then awesome, it's amazing. Maybe I have a banger month. And then there are other months where it's more slow. And so I think whatever path you choose, nothing is guaranteed. That's the lesson. Whatever path you choose, nothing is guaranteed. So really it's just about carving out a space for yourself where you feel excited about the work that you're doing or gratified by it. Or even if that's not your relationship to work, you just wanna go in and get your check, that you feel good about the choice that you make for yourself. Because at the end of the day, you're the only one who's gonna have to live with it all day, every day, nine to five or whatever hours you create for yourself. I also have really been appreciating this time to really learn about business. I mean, my financial literacy has gone up, 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 baby. I had to hire an accountant to help me manage the financial aspect of my business because I have an LLC now and there's like so much paperwork and so much stuff that goes into that. I've also not only incorporated, but elected to be taxed as an S Corp, which comes with different tax benefits, but that also then means I have to set up something called payroll and that's a whole process to get set up as well. So my financial literacy has gone way up over this last year. I opened a retirement savings account. I learned about things like a CD and a high yield savings account and things that I feel like I just didn't really have space or capacity to learn about before because I really was dedicating all my time and energy to being excellent at my studies. I think another important thing to note is that when I started posting on social media, I was still in school that whole time. It really was over my first and second year doing my master's degree that I started to explore a potential career in social media to start posting, not really expecting it to necessarily go anywhere, but of course, hoping that it would, and it did. And it's been really nice to not have to split my time because I feel as though when I was still in school and starting off on social media, that's where all my time went. Like when I tell you I did very, very little outside of those two things, I did very, very little outside of those two things. When I first started on TikTok, I was posting two to three times every single day because that's what all the social media manager girlies were saying that you needed to do at the time to get the algorithm to care about you and pick up your videos and push them out. So that's what I was doing. And I've appreciated really being able to focus 
my energy on creating and education and pouring into this one avenue as opposed to having to split my time and attentions. And I think that's also opened up space to be able to really build community in a meaningful way. Like, it's not that I didn't have friends before or didn't talk to people before or ever go out, but it was way more scarce. And I think I'm just building much deeper and more profound bonds um, now that I'm not spread so thin, you know? And whether it's you splitting your time between school and building a business or anything else, I think whenever you're splitting your time and attention too thinly, then the balance of life gets thrown totally off kilter. Okay, let's be real honest about the cons of leaving my MA PhD program. Well, honestly, I think a con for that first month was actually adjusting to not having that structure that I was used to being in the classroom my whole life. While now a year in, I can totally appreciate the freedom of waking up every day and being the architect of my own life. For those first three months after I left my program, I was filled with such a sense of dread and unsure if I've made the right decision and just feeling so directionless without those built-in kind of deadlines and direction and expectations that I was so used to receiving from my educators. I think this is a part of major life changes that we don't talk about enough. And maybe this is just my experience, though I suspect it's not. But whenever I make a major change in my life, it is always accompanied with a ton of anxiety and self-doubt. And even after I've made the change, just a feeling of, Ooh, I made the wrong decision because it's scary to leave something that feels comfortable. I had been a student my whole life. And so to leave the embrace of something so familiar that felt so good that I knew I could do well at because I had a track record of it for something that was a total unknown. There's no security blanket. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out, right? Like totally on me. I have all kinds of responsibilities. I have a mortgage to pay and all kinds of other things to handle in my business, right? That was scary because it could have totally not worked out. <laughs> like, I feel very lucky that it did work out and I met the right people and I had the right opportunities at the right time and the universe has just provided for me in a way that I'm so deeply grateful for. And it could have gone totally left. I could have left this master's program, been like, I'm gonna do this full time. And then suddenly all the work dried up and it all went away tomorrow or my video started flopping and everything started failing. Like there are no guarantees in any avenue. So that sense of leaving the familiar was definitely an immediate con, but slowly over time has turned into more of a pro in a lot of ways, because I think it's forced me to mature and grow up and trust myself and trust that what I need is going to manifest itself exactly when I need it. I think another con is that I assumed when I left my program that a lot of the intensity and emotional overwhelm that I felt when I was still in it would magically go away. But I think what I'm realizing is that part of just being a human in the world and specifically being an adult is that life is very overwhelming, right? Like whether it's me being overwhelmed because I'm in school and I have all these deadlines and I feel like I don't have the time and space to fully explore ideas and I'm emotionally like down because I'm reading these super heavy texts that are delving into and talking about black trauma all the time. Whether it's that or it's me doing this entrepreneurial thing, which opens up my life in a different way. I have more time and space, but I'm overwhelmed because I need to make sure I'm hitting certain benchmarks so I can handle my business expenses. And so I can make sure that I'm still running payroll properly and that I'm networking with the right people and procuring the right opportunities, even though networking is something that I thought of as like a dirty word for the longest time because I saw it as like this deeply transactional tit for tat type of thing. The emotional overwhelm, at least the way I'm wired, has never gone away. It's just transformed. It's manifested in different ways around different issues. And um, that's been a con, I guess, because my assumption was that when I left this program, most if not all of that would go away for me. But living in the world is stressful. We all have a lot of responsibilities and pressures, both externally imposed and internally opposed. And that is a lifelong grappling. And I think it's kind of on each of us to do the internal work to manage our emotional worlds so that we can meet what will inevitably be overwhelmed with as much calm and poise and uh, graciousness as humanly possible. Another con is that I really miss the rigor of the classroom. I find myself craving it often. 
often because I feel as though being in that environment made it so easy for me to make content because there were just constantly things that I was like learning or exposed to that were so fascinating. I was like, oh, I wanna do a deeper dive on that text we just read and make a video about it. And I certainly have no shortage of ideas now, which I feel very grateful for. There are always things that are kind of sparking that in me, but I would be lying if I said I didn't miss the rigor of the classroom at times. Um, Thankfully, I'm still like really close to a lot of my friends from the program that I was in, so I still get that rigor in my everyday life and conversations when we're hanging out or having game nights and things of that sort. But it's not the same thing as being in the classroom all the time. Though I will say there are some substitutes for this, I suppose, as an adult just out in the world. Sometimes I'll see academic lectures that are happening at public places or even at Northwestern that are open to the public that are super interesting to me and I'll just go and I'll sit and I'll soak it all in because I know that my spirit needs that. Even if I'm not in school right now, even if I never go back to school, which is a strong possibility at this point, I still need that intellectual rigor. I think it just, it feeds my spirit in a way that nothing else can or does. Something else that has been a real reality check is that when you are built into these institutions, there are resources that you have access to that at least I didn't give a second thought to, but that aren't necessarily available to the average Joe. For example, Northwestern, like many other colleges and universities, has an online library where you can access so many books and articles and all these resources for free that otherwise, if you were just Googling it regularly, maybe you would run up against the paywall and they would ask you $40 to read the article or something like that. But because you're at this academic institution, you can read it for free. I am just regularly astonished at how many resources I had access to totally free of charge that now I'm having to pay for. And in that vein, I also had health insurance built into my MA PhD program stipend scholarship package. We had really good healthcare plans. And now that I am working for myself full time as an entrepreneur, I have to pay for my healthcare every single month. Uh, I have a plan where I pay a little over $200 a month for that. And then I also pay for my dental, but that's totally something that I took for granted when I was still in the program because healthcare is expensive and it is a very confusing process. I swear it baffles me that we don't learn these basic life skills when we're still in K through 12 education. We should be taught how to do our taxes. We should be taught how to apply for healthcare through the marketplace should we ever need to in between jobs or if you're a full-time entrepreneur or work for yourself, right? Like these are just not things that were taught. And so when you run into a moment where you have to procure that for yourself, it's just like everything's totally up in the air. And the marketplace is very confusing. I mean, you can compare plans, but there's so many options and I don't know, it's kind of like decision fatigue, right? I mean, how do I know which one is the best option and best bang for my buck? and what makes the most sense. That was definitely a challenge to navigate. So shout out to Northwestern because I definitely miss <laughs> just having that all handled and they automatically enroll you in the healthcare. You don't have to do all the paperwork and the signing up or anything like that. Overall, I am very pleased with my decision to leave my program. I feel that it was the right decision for me and it might be the right decision for you if you're still in a program. I think that's just totally up to you. If you're interested in getting a little peek into my life when I was still in my MAPHD program, check out some of these vlog videos where I take you through a day in my life. I have had so many people come up to me in real life and say, oh, this is helpful, or I watched this before I came to Northwestern, which is so sweet. I just want you all to feel empowered to carve out whatever path feels good, whether it's continuing in academia, whether it's pursuing a nine to five, or whether it's working for yourself full time, building out a business, building out your own path. There's no right or wrong. It is simply what feels good in your body and your spirit and the way that you can best serve the world that we lovingly inhabit. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you wanna see any kind of academic content from me, feel free to drop video suggestions in the comments down below and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.